Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's webinar. My name is Adam, and I'll be your moderator. We're joined by Jeff Grogan. Jeff is a Fast Track Advisor with Henry Schein Dental and is here tonight to discuss patient engagement apps and intraoral scanners. Tonight's webinar is on the shorter side, about 30 minutes or so. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to email us at webinars at henryshine.com, or there will be a slide at the end of the webinar with all of our Fast Track Advisors information, and you can simply reach out to them. Before we begin, I do want to note that Henry Shine is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Jeff, thanks for being here. Hey, good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Grogan. I'm one of Henry Shine's Fast Track Technology Advisors. Um, here in the past couple of webinars, you've got to hear from my colleague, Matt Kunzler, about scanners and how to use them both for orthodontics and for Crown and Bridge. Uh, today, we're going to go one step further. We're going to talk about once you scan, what next? So to kind of introduce the evening and kind of the agenda of what I'm going to go through, we're going to break down the different uh, patient engagement applications. And three words you're going to get to hear a lot, uh, engage, excite, and educate. Um, that's kind of the core principles of these patient engagement applications, and they can be used uh, pretty much throughout almost every facet of dentistry. So orthodontics, uh, you know, rehab or, or full, mouth, full mouth reconstruction. Uh, you can even get into tooth whitening or long-term patient monitoring. Uh, and the whole point of these applications is to drive the conversation forward to, again, educate, excite, engage your patient for them to understand a, a prescribed treatment so that way you can increase your case acceptance. So without further ado, uh, we'll kind of overview the evening. We're gonna look at orthodontic simulation tools. We're gonna look at smile design tools, uh, kind of long-term patient monitoring tools and comparing two different points in time to each other. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with uh, either additional tools or expanded ecosystems. The orthodontic simulation tools uh, do exactly what their name says. You know, They are there to give you a representation of you know, if you did this treatment, here is the expected outcome. Um, and it can be used for clear liners. It can be used for straight, uh, straight wires and brackets. Uh, but it is, again, education, excitement, engagement, uh, all centered around orthodontics. So just to give you kind of a snapshot of what some of these tools do, uh, I did the same case uh, myself, so I'm not making fun of me, uh, but through Death by Serona and their uh, orthodontic tools, Medit and their Medit Ortho Simulation, and 3Shape and their Treatment Simulator. All three of these tools uh, have a lot of the same principles, uh, but may operate slightly different. Uh, both Serona and Medit uh, also incorporate some analytics, uh, being able to segment tooth from tooth, tooth from tissue, and then uh, receive some reporting. Uh, as well as that ortho simulation. Uh, three shape is going to be a very instant gratifi uh, gratification, uh, quick, easy ortho simulator tool so that you can do something very quickly chair side. Um, let's jump into Medit software and I'll kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So here we are in Medit software. This is their ortho simulation software. Uh, and what it's going to do is after the scan, it's going to allow you to launch that tool and then there's gonna be several steps of setup before we get to the actual analysis and simulation tools. So first step being to set the mid. So you're gonna set the upper midline, lower midline, and then you will confirm when those have been done. There's gonna be a little processing between each step. So you know, this overall process is probably gonna take five to 10 minutes when you're sitting with a patient to get uh, start to finish. Uh, but they are very nice tools that really help you advance uh, treatment of orthodontics. Uh, next step in uh, Medit would be to actually go through and analyze the segmentation of the teeth. So the software did the majority of the work for me. I may need to go through and uh, tweak where it segmented the tooth or teeth. So here I can quickly and easily go through and kind of re-segment different parts of this. Uh, so that I have an accurate simulation. So by clicking on each tooth, I can use my add tool or remove tool to uh, further either accent or uh, remove what the computer put together. So give me just a second as I make a couple extra clicks here and finish the segmentation process. And we're starting to look pretty good here. Maybe just a little bit more here.
that looks like we have a pretty well segmented model. One final little spot. Okay. Now that our model is segmented, it's going to go ahead and separate uh, virtually, digitally, uh, tooth from tissue, tooth from tooth. Uh, so that way we can now start to play with the virtual setup uh, of the teeth and we can look at the different uh, measurements, analytics, uh, everything else that's there. So as the computer starts to generate my model, you can see where it has segmented each individual tooth. And then we'll move on through the process of the ortho simulation. So just another moment here. And you'll see the tissue start to come in, the base start to come in. Uh, and now here is my models that I have. I have my initial scan. And now that compared to my actual ortho simulation. So if you were looking to present this to a patient with rather few clicks, uh, I have now a presentable uh, case to the patient. So uh, original on the left, new on the right, and I can start to pan this model. I can start to look at different views side by side, tops, bottoms, both arches together. Uh, but focusing on the lower arch just for a second, you can see in this case, there was just a touch of relapsed crowding. And here is how the simulator put that back into uh, what it would consider proper life. So I can use those, I can go one step further. And if I didn't like the initial simulation, I do have all of my orthodontic measurements that I can go through and I can make any tweaks on my own as well. And then I can actually play a simulation of the corrected treatment. So as this moves along, you'll start to see teeth move and you'll start to see from start to finish how that case is supposed to advance. So there was the upper arch, here is the lower arch, and you can see the same down here. You can see teeth starting to move. Uh, the good and the bad is that with these uh, simulation tools, though they are going to give you the prescribed treatment, the expected outcome, um, it doesn't necessarily account for actual tooth movements. So here's a simulation, but we physically know that this cannot happen. Right? Teeth can't go through each other. So they are excellent tools to present to the patient, but just know that these are meant to be kind of an instant gratification type of, of tool, not necessarily exact clinical result. If I wanted to, I can also go through and divide up the number of clear liners that I expect this to take. So I can see each case, uh, let's back that down to seven. And by each step, I can see the anticipated result. So step one, step two, step three, all the way through the process uh, to give you the expected uh, outcome for that uh, orthodontic case. If I am satisfied and I was done, I can just complete my case and this will send that back to MeditLink where all of my cases will reside. Okay, next stop, uh, we're gonna look at smile design tools. Uh, these are gonna be tools that allow us to look at a variety of different indications. So it could be a full mouth reconstruction, start to finish. Uh, it could be as simple as whitening trays, could be used for orthodontics. But now we're gonna go kind of one step beyond the treatment simulator that really just looked at the teeth themselves. Smile design is going to allow your patients now to imagine what would a smile do to their new face? So how can I make changes here and what will that, that outcome be uh, for them as a whole. Uh, so it's a way for them to envision, you know, a new BEP. Planeca, Medit, and 3Shape all have smile design tools. And you can kind of see the different uh, evaluation tools based on the same case here out of Planeca, out of Medit, and out of 3Shape. And we'll take a little bit deeper dive on, on 3Shape smile design tools so you get a little bit better feel for how these things work. Here I am. In the smile design application, everything is going to start with a two-dimensional picture. So it's going to be looking at a picture of your patient. And then as I move through the steps, it's going to want landmarks. So pupils, wings of the nose, corners of the mouth, and the visible lip line. So that when I put a template smile, it starts to fit not only in uh, perspective, but now you know, with the visualization of that as I progress through the steps. I have a variety of different libraries to choose from. So this is where you get to really engage and really excite 
uh, your patients, as you sit down with them chair side, you can actually have your patients design their own smile, their own virtual wax up. So as I'm sitting down and I'm talking to this gentleman, he may scroll through and he may like this design. I can then start to use that template and I can expand, I can contract, I can start to move and change the curvature of the mouth uh, to fit what would actually be his new smile. The next step is gonna to be to assign a texture. Texturing, I also have a whole lot of options so I can scroll through and find one that I think would best represent. And I can mess with shading, I can change brightnesses or shadows. All of those are customizable tools for you to use with your patients. But ultimately what you're after is the ability to now take that template smile and give a case presentation of Mr. or Mrs. Patient, this is you today. How would you feel about a new smile? And then for that, that emotional impact, that emotional connection to see and knew them. Uh, here in this case, yeah, obviously it's a, it's a pretty advanced case, but that's a pretty significant impact and the ability for that patient to take that information uh, and go back and either discuss with a, a loved one uh, or to uh, kind of think about that treatment. This can also be sent to that patient. So I could send this information to the patient so they can actually see this and go home and explore uh, that treatment option. What the really exciting thing about smile design is if case acceptance happens, so if you're able to sit down and educate, excite, and engage with that patient, uh, the next step from there is really kind of neat. And this kind of shows the back end of, of the potential of smile design. Here was that initial smile design. If I send this off to a lab, that lab is going to be able to take that information and they're going to be able to combine it with a three-dimensional scan, so an intraoral scan. Um, and then they are going to be able to use that smile design as a template to now create the new smile. Uh, that information, the smile design itself is two-dimensional information, so it's non-clinical information, it's not functional information. Um, but as we combine that with an actual intraoral scan, I now have function because I've now taken 2D, expanded to 3D, accounted for things like occlusion and contacts, and I can actually create something for that patient to either try in or hold in their hand and see their new smile. Okay, next stop is gonna be our scan comparison. Scan comparison tools are really used to look at different points in time and to really educate the patients on, this was you then, this is you now, these are the changes. Uh, it can be really, really strong uh, if you look at bruxism, gingival recession, uh, either the progression or regression of orthodontics. Uh, these tools really paint a good picture of two different points in time and the variance thereof, which allow you to prescribe whatever treatment it is you're prescribing. It could be, look how much you've ground your teeth down over the last year. There's been a lot of stress in your life. Maybe you ought to get an occlusal guard and being able to show that patient the actual changes for them to see, ah, I get it. Yes, let's go ahead and do that. So by showing them the different points in time, by showing them the variance mapping of what's there, increasing case acceptance based on your diagnostic. Okay, so here we are in 3Shape software to look at their patient monitoring tool. Uh, the way this works is you have a patient, uh, of course yours would have a different name, but then if I click over on the patient monitoring application, it's going to allow me to pick which scans I want to evaluate over what period of time. So I just simply would select the scans that I'm interested in uh, comparing, and then it's going to go ahead and fold those models together, and then I'm going to get variance mapping based on that. So here you can see rather minimal changes from the uh, outside. On this specific case, you can see some pretty large changes right here. So you may start asking yourself the question, gosh, there, there's a large change going on there. What's, what's going on? The patient may say, I have no idea. Well, we know that there are changes going on and we can go one step further and actually now start to evaluate how significant are those changes. So by using a slice plane, I can actually go through and now start to measure the actual change in the mouth. This specific case is, is looking at erosive wear on the backside of that tooth. 
Uh, but you can see, you know, based on the two different scans over the two, two different times, they've lost almost a half a millimeter in a very, very short amount of time. So that can be used to help educate, hey, this is why something is happening. This is why I think we ought to look at whatever treatment. Uh, to show you another case. So it may be a little less impactful, uh, but uh, a longer period of time. So here are multiple scans taken over from 2018 to 2021. And if we look at those scans, we will start to see some subtle changes. Now I know this case near and dear because this happens to be me. But when I look at these two scans together, 2018 to 2021, I'll be able to see any of the variants in my mouth. So here we are, and the most significant changes, as you can see, I've had a couple fillings, and I had a couple wear uh, facets that were filled. So over the life of this, so over the last three years, green has not changed, red has. If this would have been gingival recession or uh, occlusal wear, things like that, you know, you, these would have also shown up on this variance mapping and be able to see exactly what happened and then, again, further progress that treatment uh, from that ed education with the patient. All right. We've spoken about orthodontic simulation tools. We've looked at smile design tools. Uh, we just reviewed uh, the different scan comparison tools. So let's stop uh, and see what else is left. What is the other functionality left? And then any expanded ecosystems to further that treatment. So both Meta and 3Shape have a couple extra tools that we haven't spoken about yet. Uh, crown fit, face scanning, Meta temporaries, and then various integrations with software. Uh, those are all under the, the Medit platform. Uh, CrownFit is a very neat tool to look at a planned restoration compared to the restoration you received back. So I can take the designed restoration, I can scan uh, the fabricated crown to get an idea of how it's going to fit. Was it overmilled or undermilled? Uh, face scan can be used to actually scan from about nasion down to the chin and capturing some of the uh, anterior teeth uh, and combining that with an intraoral scan. So it's now starting to look more at the entire face, a larger patient record than just an intraoral scan. I'm now starting to incorporate uh, part of the face, uh, even some CBCT data to get a larger patient record. Uh, the temporaries is gonna be a really interesting tool. And as, uh, as the manufacturing world uh, continues to progress, it's gonna be a very strong tool to fabricate same day temporaries. Uh, Medit's come out with a program uh, that looks at uh, both pre-op and post-op scans uh, to be able to very quickly and efficiently design temporaries. Uh, still working on the manufacturing side to be able to do these quickly and effectively, but it's good to see that the, uh, the digital dentistry world continues to push the envelope and continues to uh, progress with where technology is at. And they also have come out with various integrations for different software, whether that be something like DTX Studio uh, or various design softwares or different uh, integrations thereof. Uh, really exciting news out of 3Shape uh, just came in the last week or so. Uh, they launched their 3Shape uh, Unite program, which is basically a app universe. So anybody can now create content, can create different applications for various purposes, all of which can be uploaded and downloaded within the 3 Shape Unite system. Uh, and then as well as they have one called Patient Motion. Uh, that's able to not only capture an upper, a lower, and a bite scan, but to be able to put that uh, bite scan in motion and capture your actual patient's articulation, it's gonna be great uh, to make sure that uh, any restoration fits well. As we look at the expanded ecosystem, you know, what do you do with this stuff beyond the scan? We kind of went through all the different pa uh, patient engagement applications. The next natural step is to start to look at using these applications in conjunction with different design software uh, to be able to manufacture whatever it is that you were speaking with your patients about. So whether that's in the 3D printing world or whether that's in the milling world, uh, those are kind of the next evolutions of that digital workflow. Uh, Henry Schein, uh, through Henry Schein Dental's YouTube channel uh, or uh, various other links, uh, has access to a lot of really good information about 
are different manufacturers or different workflows, uh, and those might be nice next steps for you to explore. Uh, looking at today, though, if you do need more information, uh, I would really highly suggest you reach out to one of our fast track advisors. You can see them listed on the screen, uh, both uh, you know, all across the country, north, uh, north to south, east to west. Uh, I would suggest getting in touch with one of these individuals and kind of furthering that conversation specifically to uh, your needs. Uh, I do appreciate your time this evening. If there's anything else that we can help with, please let us know. But for now, I'm going to kick it back to Adam. Thank you, Jeff, for sharing some really great information on what intraoral scanners and their software can do, especially how to engage patients in their scans and treatment planning. If anyone would like to get in touch with Jeff or any of our other Fast Track advisors, their contact info is on screen for you. Feel free to take a screenshot. We did record tonight's webinar, and we will distribute that within the week. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.